What's up, foxes? Today's minigame guide will be about the Hollowed Sepulchre. As you know, if you've watched any of my agility videos, that I absolutely love agility. It's my favorite skill, but I've gotta say I'm not the biggest Sepulchre fan. It requires a lot of attention, it's click intensive and time based, and it can be profitable at higher levels. You guys are so awesome, I really do appreciate you. Thanks for the subs, likes, shares, and all the awesome comments. This minigame is found beneath Darkmire. You can use a Draken's Medallion and teleport to Darkmire, then run from there. You must have completed Sins of a Father to access this. Of course, you're going to want to wear Full Graceful here. If you don't have anything unlocked, it's recommended to purchase the Hollowed Ring first with your Hollowed Marks, then continue in order with Hollowed Grapple, Hollowed Focus, Hollowed Symbol, and Hollowed Hammer. It's recommended to have 70 plus health for survivability as failing traps will do damage, but it's not necessary. Also, you should have a Ceridoman item to use the Magic Obelisk at the end of each run to restore your run energy. If you don't, it will actually drain it instead. You'll need Agility level 52 to access it. Floor 2 is level 62 Agility, Floor 3 is 72 Agility, Floor 4 is 82 Agility, and Floor 5 is 92 Agility. Looting Coffins is not required, but you will need level 66 Thieving, which is where you will make your profit and gain Hallow Marks. These additional stats are not necessary, but if you have 56 construction, you will be able to pass broken bridges, but you'll need a saw, hammer, planks, and nails for this. Purchasing a hollowed hammer will stop you from failing. You have 54 prayer. This allows you to pass Sarah Doman Brazers, which requires you to bring at least two vampire dust to sacrifice, or you only need one per if you purchase a hallowed symbol. If you have seven magic to pass portal frames, which requires you to use enchantment spells. However, if you fail it twice, it will be impassable. Purchasing a hallowed focus will prevent you from failing this. If you have 62 range, you can pass pillars, which require you to bring a crossbow and myth grapple. Of course, you can fail here as well, unless you purchase the hallowed grapple. There are five floors, and they are timed. You have two minutes to make it through the first floor, and two additional minutes added per floor. If you don't make it to the stairs in time, a wall will close the stairs off from you, and you'll have to quick exit back to the beginning and try again. Standing in front of the stairs at the end of a floor pauses the time as long as you've hopped over. You can take your time to refill your run energy by clicking the magical obelisk while having the Ceridoman item you brought before continuing. I brought a holy blessing, but you could use any of their items. It's important to note the floors get harder as you go and putting tile markers down is an actual lifesaver. As for actual placement of the tiles, take your time and trial and error each floor until you get them down before trying to speed run. Now let's go over the types of obstacles you'll encounter and how to pass them. Nailing an obstacle sets you back a little bit and does damage to you unless you're wearing a hollowed ring. Keep in mind that they like to double up on obstacles so you could be dealing with, for example, the wizard's flames and double arrows at the same time. First up is the wizard statue obstacle. These guys shoot fire, so watch for the gaps on one side and mark the tiles. Then when it's safe, run through. Some of them fire at the same time and some of them alternate, having two different patterns that they use. So just make sure to note the spots that they don't have fire so you can run through. Getting the timing for this one is super easy. The Knight Statue. They throw a Ceridoman sword along a predefined path. It will return to the statue once sent out, so make sure to wait for the sword to either have it just left the statue or follow behind it having just come back to the statue and run before it's sent out again. The sword speed is faster in lower levels, so keep that in mind. Crossbowman Statue. These guys fire an arrow down a single path, but there's three of them and they could come down any path. Sometimes they only fire one at a time, sometimes they fire two at a time, so try to gauge smaller steps to have more control over how quickly your character can change lanes. This one is random, so it may take you a couple tries to get the hang of it. Priest Statue. These guys summon lightning in a 3x3 pattern that can stun you briefly. Here you'll want to get your timing right to run completely through. The last is the strange tiles. They are blocks of yellow and blue teleport circles that when walked over, teleport you forward or backwards. Blue is forward, yellow is backwards. It's really easy to lose time on this one, so try to run a straight path over it when none of them are lit, or run for a blue one if you think you can make it. That's all you need to know to actually play the minigame, but let's touch on the coffins real quick in case you're wanting to make some money while you're here. There are coffins on each floor, but they are blocked behind either a broken bridge, their dome embrazer, portal frame, or pillars, which is where the non-required stats from earlier come in. One strategy is to not loot any coffin except the Grand Hollowed Coffin, which is found on the last floor as it has the better loot table. This allows you to keep your speed up, making your floors in time, and making some decent money while you're at it. You can only loot a coffin before the timer runs out, and if you fail to loot, you can be poisoned. To increase your chances of successfully opening coffins, bringing a lockpick, or even better, a strange old lockpick is recommended. Okay, that was a ton of information, so let's simplify it even more. 
One, bring a Ceridoman item. Two, start the minigame. Three, pass obstacles as you come to them. Four, use the magical obelisk at the end of the floors. Five, ignore coffins till the last floor and or whatever floor your agility level allows. Because you still want to collect hallowed marks. Remember to bring necessary items for the obstacles if you are looting any coffin except the grand hallowed coffin. Number six, go down the stairs to the next floor. And number seven, rinse and repeat. Alright guys, that's all I have for this mini game. I will be putting together a specific video to go over each floor, including tile markers and how to pass them at a later date. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.